Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear friends and colleagues, I'm delighted truly to be with you at this fifth Indian Ocean Conference. I'd like to uh, extend my grateful thanks to the India Foundation for inviting me to speak and to the government and people of our brotherly country, the United Arab Emirates, for their generous and immaculate hospitality. And may I take the opportunity to once again express my warmest congratulations on the golden jubilee of the United Arab Emirates. So happy National Day again. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer my sincere thanks to His Excellency President Godabaya Rajapakasha for graciously taking the chair. He guides a productive discussion that can act as a platform for effective multilateral action across the Indian Ocean. The Sultanate of Oman has an extensive coastline on the Indian Ocean and a long tradition of trade and interaction with the people and countries that surround it, which goes back far beyond the bounds of recorded history. Our national identity reflects this. Our people are diverse. They have connections in India, in Iran, East Africa, and Southeast Asia. This history of engagement with a wide range of cultures has contributed greatly to the character of Omanis and their hospitable and open-minded nature. Respect for all cultures, races, and religions is deeply ingrained, and this has made an important contribution to harmonious coexistence at home. Our culture, cuisine, art, and language all reflect the interaction caused by centuries of connectivities with our Indian Ocean neighbors. Which is why the themes of this conference, ecology, economy, and epidemic, touch us really deeply. And I would like to say a little on each topic in turn. The beauty and the biodiversity of the ocean is extraordinary. We need to take steps today to conserve this for our future generations and, crucially, reverse the damage already done through overfishing and pollution, as well as preserving any further rise in sea levels. The magnificent turtles, the beautiful dolphins, and glowing, glowing corals that populate our seas, just to name a few, are all dear to our hearts and a source of boundless joy. Exploitation of the ocean is nothing new. Our ancestors have done it for millennia, and now, for most of us, probably all of us, the blue economy is a vital part of our long-term development plans. There is an urgent need to think deeply about the implications of this. The very concept of a blue economy is totally reliant upon the principle of sustainability. Without better stewardship of the ocean resources, there will be 
no blue economy, blue economy for our grandchildren and future generations. The well-being of the marine environment, the threat of climate change, and the future prosperity of the people of the Indian Ocean are all deeply interconnected and interlinked. Climate change is already having a detrimental effect through the increased frequency of what used to be of what used to be viewed as freak weather conditions. Several major cyclones that have hit Oman in the last 15 years, all of which have inflicted significant damage. I know that Oman is not the only country represented here today which has already suffered the consequences of climate change. Increasing scientific evidence affirms the need for urgent action. And the recent COP26 meeting has helped us focus minds on these issues. But these solutions, the solutions are unlikely to be simple or straightforward, and we recognize that. And finding them will certainly require a well-coordinated, proactive, and above all, multilateral response. For Oman, the biggest component in the response to climate change is diversification of the economy. And the Indian Ocean, as a secure environment for free trade, will facilitate innovation, maximize economic development, and maximize diversification. Our special economic zone and port at Dukum, alongside the existing ports of Sohar in the north and Salala in the south, are all part of this future. Salala is already the 10th biggest port in the world in terms of volume. For this ambition to be realized, the seas must be secure. Multilateralism is the only effective way to achieve this. How many national navies have a truly global capability? I think we can count them on the fingers of one hand. So maritime security depends on multilateralism, and multilateralism depends upon the rule of law. Just 15 years ago, piracy was a significant problem. But within a few years, transnational cooperation reduced the impact. The establishment of a maritime security patrol area in which a coalition of navies worked to secure the seas did the job by a large extent. But I wish to share my increasing concern about the potential escalation of regional tensions in the Indian Ocean. Piracy may have receded, and now politically motivated hijacking is the new phenomenon. Recently, these have come into the context of Iran and its relations with the region and wider world. And let us be clear, more often than not, the narrative you find in the media is heavily spun this way and that. It could not be clearer that the way to minimize these incidents is not to exclude from international dialogue those with whom there may be disagreement or indeed misunderstanding. Isolation only serves to limit the capacity of the international community to tackle the issues we face, not only as the countries of the Indian Ocean, but also as a planet. All parties must be welcomed in the international arena 
on the basis of transparent communication. This will give us all a fuller knowledge of what goes on in our seas and so guarantee a safer and more secure environment for all. Currently, we all face another similar challenge. How to rebuild our economies in the teeth of the COVID-19 pandemic. As we tackle this, surely our environment and our oceans must be taken into consideration as a matter of priority. As countries around the world began to experience epidemics and lockdowns in 2020, one silver lining shone through again and again. The collapse of economic activity brought with it a sharp fall in greenhouse gas emissions. The air became clearer and cleaner, and wildlife began to thrive. But these gains will not last of their own accord. Our task today is to put into place the mechanisms necessary to ensure that it does. Our investments in green energy need to be of the order of trillions, not billions. Sustainability must remain at the top of the agenda and the rule of maritime law and strong multilateral collaboration must build a brighter future for all generations to come. The pandemic has also highlighted to everyone the importance of unity in the face of a common threat. We share far more than we differ. And where difference and differences exist, the pathway to harmony comes through inclusivity, mutual understanding, and mutual respect. I am deeply grateful to have the opportunity to share these thoughts with you. My thanks again to our hosts, to the chair, and to all the organizers of this great event. Thank you very much.